we're back. <laughs> hey guys, look at what I did. I've got a bunch of paintings behind me now. <laughs> uh, so welcome to our Thursday paint alongs and I'm just getting better and better. Hopefully the sound and everything will be super, super wonderful. Um, today we're going traveling. We're going to be traveling on Google Maps. And um, none of us can go on a workshop, but I figure we're going to go travel to Italy today. And so if you look, um, we're going to try to top. I see that you guys were talking about um, topping last week's elephant. This one will be fun. This one will be fun. We're going to do traveling to an island in off of Naples in Italy. And so this is a thing that I do with Google Maps and I do Street View. And so we're going to do that today. And... Um, if you don't have the link, go to this and to the comp into the comment section down here, and the link is in there um, to, to go to the exact spot we're going to be painting at. And so I already did this um, scene already today, and so you'll see what that's going to be like. Oh, here you go. There's what we did already today. So I was already in Italy today, and so now we're going to go back. And so here we go. Uh, so first off, let me just um, show you the supplies for all you newcomers, and the supplies here is what I'm going to be using. And so the supplies are watercolors by Holbein because they don't have oxygen in them. And so you can get some beautiful colors with that. And so we're going to use that or my brushes. You can get my brushes on my website. And we're going to use Stonehenge Aqua Paper like we always do. And so we're going to go um, into, if you want any of this information, go to my website. And on my website, I have everything. And so down here is where the image is. And so just go right here. Click on this and you'll make it a little bit bigger picture so you can find. But actually, this one, you can actually go to my, like I said, go to the YouTube channel by clicking this YouTube button right here. And you can find the exact location where you're painting it. So you can actually pretend like you're sitting there and painting. So we can't go there, actually. So we're just going to go there imaginary. <laughs> so we're just going online. Let's go right to the value study. All right. And so the value studies, what we're going to do is we're going to, I always change it black and white. Um, I just uh, watched a um, our morning meeting with we, Andy Evanson, a um, Minnesota painter. Um, unbelievable stuff. And he does his value study in watercolor, which is a really cool thing to do. So if you can have time to do that, we don't have time here on this site, uh, in my hour to do that. But um, I changed the black and white or the color photo to black and white. And this is going to be pretty much our value pattern. And so what you're going to do is you're going to try to leave this area. Oh boy, hold on one second. We're going to try to leave this area right here and here the sun. We're going to make the sun bright right through this areas. And so that's going to leave the only part we're going to leave white. Everything else, like maybe a little bit of white on the boats. And this buildings are all in all in shadow. So there's nothing going to be on this building that's going to be as light as in the shadow. There's a little spot right here that's a little bit lighter. But again, you're not going to make that white. You're going to make this in shadow. And the light will be right in this area right here. So again, know your big value patterns. You got to know the big pattern of values. It's very important that you know how to do the lights and darks. I pretty much separate the light from the dark. The middle tones, I always say you can go either way on both the things, but if you know your light and your dark part, that's more important. And so let's go right to our tabletop and get started. Oh, today um, Oakley's going to be, um, here's my friend Oakley. He's going to um, show you what beer we're drinking today. Today we're drinking a boarding pass IPA. This is so perfect because it's a boarding pass to travel to Italy. So it's a UFO IPA. And so that's what we're drinking today. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, nice. And so um, Oakley's going to um, guard that for us. And the reason I brought Oakley in today is because I'm going to be putting in a few people in this scene. And a lot of times people ask me, well, how do you put a person into a scene? Well, these are just very small little people that are in there. They're not part of the painting that's going to make it look in that part of the area. Um, it's their center of interest is these boats right here, this whole area. I call it area of interest. And that's what we're going to zoom in on is this area right here is your center of interest. And again, I like to call it area of interest because it's not a single thing. It's an area. But I do want to put some people to make it a little bit more lively. I started this painting here. This is the one I did this afternoon. And I noticed it was very empty. Like there's nobody here. So I decided, hey, let's put some people in this. And so what do you do if you need some people? Well, Oakley bends all kinds of ways. And so we can use Oakley to make him look like people walking. And so get yourself one of these um, armatures. And um, Oakley, he comes with a stand and it's magnetic. This one's magnetic. They have ones that are not magnetic, but you just stand him up. 
and you can put them in any position and you just draw these little people right here. So if you need to put a person in there, or you can go online and go on Google and see if there's something like just type in people walking and stuff. You could put that in there and you can put some little, these are just gestures. These are basically David's dabs. If you ever known to take one of my classes. So Oakley, watch my beer. And so uh, he already stood for me to make these people. So I put some people in here with the bird, the bicycle and somebody walking a dog and a little guy here. So those are just going to be little in indications of people in that painting. All right. So let's get going. We're going to do um, cool background, warm foreground. I kind of think and that's going to be my uh, way of thinking is, is that uh, it's going to be cool in the back. It's going to be a, a daytime scene in the middle of the day. It's not going to be um, evening, so I'm not going to make a warm sky. I'm going to make a nice cool sky, blue sky. I'm going to use orange as my complement, and so we're going to go with that. So let me just take a look real quick to see who's hell here and just say hello. And so hello, Barbara. Hello, Sue. Hello, Ann. Hello, Lynn. Mel. Linda. Mary. Sonia. Lynn. Um, I love their appropriate beer. The beer is so per appropriate. Boarding pass. IPA. So we're going traveling. So you guys, remember, think of it. Think of you're going right to Italy. Um, okay, Lynn says, this looks tough. Um, no, it's going to be very, very simple. I just did it in class and they did a pretty, very good job with it. The drawing, of course, the drawing is very important that you get the drawing in there. I keep on telling that to my students. The number one thing is drawing. If you don't get a good drawing in there, how are you going to get a good painting? So really work the drawing. I noticed that a lot of the elephants were great, the pings, were, but some of the drawing was a little bit off here and there, but um, sometimes the watercolor or something like that can take over and, and make it look okay because it's more abstract. But on something that's important, like a boat that looks like a boat and stuff like that, you really have to make sure that the drawing is okay. So let's go to it now. Let's get um, Oakley out of the way. Cheers, guys. All right, so we're gonna go with the background dark. And I, I wanted to show you the trick. I'm not sure if anybody showed you this in a while. Um, the pencil line here is really dark because I did a lot of drawing on here. So you roll up a kneaded rubber eraser and then roll it across the paper to get rid of the graphite, leaving the line. So just go over that and just kind of go in here. I'm getting rid of the line, but I'm getting, I'm getting not rid of the line. I'm getting rid of the graphite that could get into my, into my paint, you know, and so that make it gray. So that's just, um, the lines are still there. And if you can see the lines, you know, that's, that's my line drawing. And, um, so I'm going to, I just want to get some of the, rid of some of the graphite because I want the sky to be blue. And if, it, if it's too dark and some of the blue or the gray gets into the blue, that's not a good thing. So let's wet the surface and let's go with the sky first, get right into it. And if you have any questions, remember, ask them. I'll look up every once in a while to see what I can see up there. Let me just um, really quickly make this a little bit smaller window so I can actually see what you guys are talking about. <laughs> okay, there we go. What are the important shapes for a boat to look realistic? Marie asked. Um, so basically draw boats, draw a lot of them. They you know, a lot of times there's a, that eight you can do out of them, but these are just these rubber rafts and stuff. And so basically you have to just keep on drawing them, like go online and just look up boats and just see if you can again sketch them. It's just like doing anything else. Draw them over and over until you feel like you get the right look of them. Again, if you want to do this painting and you want to have it, this these actual um, boats, then you can sometimes also take, like I tell my people, you can um, trace it. If you want to just do this painting just to get it out of the way and you're not really into boats but you do want to get this painting look good then just trace it you know i don't mind people tracing but um you have to have the drawing no matter what you do the drawing has to be number one you got to get the drawing right you can use the um graphite paper and trace it and put it onto the paper you can do that there's projectors you can do use but drawing and, and learning how to draw boats, just basically take and draw a lot of them. Just go in there and just sketch them. Sketch, sketch, sketch. So now we're going to go in here with a little bit of blue for the sky. I use ultramarine blue, a little bit of horizon. I'm just going to go in here and make the top part darker. And as it comes down, it's going to get lighter. So I'm just going to go in there and just kind of go in with these nice blues. I'm going to put it right into the buildings. I'm not going to worry about the building. The building is darker in shadow, so why would I worry about that? Go right into the building. And even wet in the building, that's okay, because I'm going to be going right in there anyways in, in a little bit. And so this color will be the part of the windows then too, if they're light windows. Otherwise, they'll be dark. And so I'm going in here, and if you need clouds, 
you got to paint around them because the white of the paper is the first thing you want to do use for the for the sky and the clouds but then if you feel like you didn't get it with the with the white of the paper you can also add white to make those clouds come up i'm just going to leave this part white all through here white that's everything that's the only thing that's going to be white um, so that it really punches that area otherwise it's not if everything is white then that area doesn't look like it's sun sunny right there so look at your value study look at the values and see what you can see with the values because that's what creates the light source the lighter it is right here and darker is around it the more this is going to look really bright so i'm going to go in here put some clouds let the paint float you know me float your pigment float that pigment in there come right down here go right from this into the mountains back there i did add another mountain on this side because if you look in the picture up here there's only a mountain right here and i don't like that being right there where the sun's going to be so i moved it over to this side and this is the only change i kind of did and i'm going to go right into the water right away right into the water and i'm not going to go into these boats because these boats have an edge that is light so i'm going to stick stick around the boats i'm going to wet it through here i'm going to wet these boats these boats are darker if you look at the picture they're darker than the um, water so we're just going to go right across them then over here just put that waves in there put a couple of little waves get that same color that this the, um, sky is, is the water you can put a little bit of green to make it look more um tropical if you want but basically water doesn't have a color well some water does like around our area here it has some color but what you want to do is just make sure that you um that you reflect the sky into the water because it's basically like a reflection of the sky let me see if there's a question hello pamela from wheaton hello maria hey jan would you consider placing larger people figure in the foreground or would that alter the focal point yeah if i put a person up here then it makes them more important so if i put a person here yes it would change everything so you have to decide that in the beginning in your value study and so here it got a little bit too hard edge so i'm gonna put that a little bit right there good question very good question because yes it would so you have to plan that out in the beginning if i put a person here maybe in the be the boats or like if there was a pier there or something but if i put one right here then that person becomes the center of interest or around that area yes good good awesome question so plan that in before you do it before you do the um painting you got to plan those things out you just can't all of a sudden add a person right there and hopefully it'll work you got to do all the planning to make sure that this stuff looks right so i'm keeping it right here you notice i got my cloth back i got my towel back so that i like to have a towel underneath everything so i can just wipe it anywhere around the paper and it stays on paper towel a little bit and, and so i'm making this a little bit darker down here okay so the sky water done how fast was that right so just get that done get that in there now let's go to the background hill so i'm gonna use a little bit of lavender and i noticed um the last couple of times i've been watching these demonstrations um of these um so andy evanson also uses holbein's lavender so i know a lot of people that use this color lavender from holbein it's probably one of their <laughs> most most um used colors i think it's just a great color because it makes a great gray it's kind of a neutral color um, it's just super fun to use and it does have white in it people don't realize that it has white in it because it's more of a pastel color but that does, shouldn't you, stop you from using it just because it has a little bit of white in it if you use it with a lot of water it becomes very transparent you know people don't realize that it's about the water how much water you use the pigment into it's not about what's in the pigment it's how you use it on your paper this horizon blue has a lot of white in it also but i'm using it very um into water i'm floating it into water so it becomes transparent it just becomes a pastel color so just remember it's okay to use those pastel colors um, just don't use it so thick that it becomes opaque all right so there sky water done mountain done now let's go right into this area and so if i were sitting right here like i was let's say i was right there placed in italy on this island outside of naples um, I would do the same way. I would, even though the sky is, the, the clouds are changing, you kind of start with the, the main values that you got. You still do the value pattern. And you usually, what I do is with my camera, I take a picture of that spot and I stick with that 
because if, if, if you're there at the spot and you're painting on the spot, it's going to change. Everything's going to change. This uh, cloud will come in and make everything different. But stick with that first um, value study that you did or picture that you have that you turned black and white. And I'm going to stand up here because it's... Now we're going to go into this, um, do this building right here. Now I got a little bit of watermark there. If you ever feel like there's something that you don't like while it's drying, don't touch it until it's dry. It's easier to make a mistake and then change it and help the mistake out after it's dry. If I go in there now with water and try to soften it out, it's just going to make it even worse. So always when there's something that you don't like anything, let it dry. Just let it dry. It's funny, um, Linda talks about the lavender. Um, yeah, uh, Andy Evanson uses it. Brianna Brown uses it. Um, I've seen a lot of people um, with their um, doing demonstrations, and they all use that lavender from Holbein. It's a super fun, fun wonderful color. As are there a lot of other colors with white that have white in it. Okay, let's go. Buildings, cool to warm, cool to warm. This is farther back than this is, so I'm going to start out, and I'm not going to wet it first. I'm going to wet it as I go along. So I'm going to go in here. And just kind of put in the edge right there. That's the dry edge. Up here it's going to be a little wet. So what color I use, is any, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use a color. And then I come back in here. And I'm going to put a little red in that. Put a little warmth in there. Just kind of get that edge. There's a little bit of a wall right here. So I'm going to stop right there. And so I'm going to go from a, um, a blur. It's going to be a little bit darker than that though. Because I need it a little bit darker than you think it's going to be. So I'm going to go a little bit, oh, look at that, the roof, it's still, it's still dry there, or still wet there, so I'm going to bleed into there. So i got to go down a little bit, add a little bit more pigment if you want it to bleed too far. And so I'm going to make it a little bit darker here, a little darker blue, get my edge, hard edge. And as I go up here, I'm going to use a little bit more pigment, so it will be a soft edge, but later on I can put the roof on there, and I can, when it's dry, I can make that a little bit, a little bit harder edged. I put a little warmth in here a little bit. I'm not that red. <laughs> so I'm just floating pigment as I go along. And so just go in here, wet this first as you're going along. Why don't I wet the whole thing at first? Because by the time I get over here, sometimes it's too late and it's dry by the time I get there. So I go slowly and I just wet it as I go along. Add any pigment color you want in there. These people are going to be in the shadow, so go right over them. The people that I drew in there afterwards. All right. Hey, Everett. Hey, Linda. Hey, Lillian. Thanks for dropping by again. You guys did a great job with the elephant. Man, boy, all the elephants I got on, the, on our um, Facebook group page. Super, super wonderful. I love what you guys did with the elephant. Just amazing stuff. And so this one, I mean, look at the drawing is very complicated, but look at how I'm painting this. Basically the sky, water, mountains, right into the buildings. Am I going and doing each individual house there? No, I'm getting a big area of dark is what I'm doing. And it's transparent, so I can still see the lines underneath, so I can find the windows, and I'll do that later. The windows in there are not as important as getting the, the shadowing in there. So I'm getting the shadows. And I'm making a little bit of warmth. And now this is too light. It's, um, it's got to be a lot darker than this, because um, the darker this is, the more the sun's gonna like just shine right down this area right here. It's gonna be awesome. So I gotta get a little bit darker in here while it's still wet. I'm going from cool. And actually you can also put some a little bit thicker, a little opaque color in there, drop it in there. Put a little bit of orange as over this side. And you look at all those colors in there. Isn't that amazing? Look at all that blue and warm and just let them mix themselves together. You don't have to mix it. You don't need to blend. Let them blend themselves. The colors blend themselves. Cheers, boarding pass, IPA. Uh, we're traveling, look at, we're in Italy right now. Isn't that great? Go on um, Google Maps, go on Street View, pick a part in the world and just try to find an area um, that you want to paint. It's amazing that um, they, there's some really great shots. I was on the island of Capri first uh, before I found this one. And um, there, boy, they had some clouds in there in the evening. The Google Maps guy must have went in there in the evening. Oh my God, they were so beautiful, the shots. 
So the only thing that's in light is here, the outer edge of the, I also put more flowers on top of this wall than are there in the picture, because it's just greenery right here. I put flowers on there, so you can change things around a little bit. So see how that goes from cool to warm? That makes it come forward. Warm colors come forward, um, grayer colors recede. So it just make, it's, it's making it recede a little bit. So now I'm gonna do the sidewalk, and the sidewalk is darker than the white of this. So I'm just gonna go in here and I started, that's a little bit of the shadow, but this is not in the shadow. This is going to be just a little bit of color. I'm going to make it warm here a little bit and just put a little bit of orange. I have two oranges. One is called Brilliant Orange. The other one's um, Yellow Orange, Permanent Yellow Orange Light. And so um, that's this one right here. So that's a little bit of orange. But this has more yellow in it, so if you mix it with blue, it gets green. Where this orange, Brilliant Orange, stays orange because there's more red in it. So when that goes with blue, it en ends up being more of a gray-brown then. So know your, know your colors and know what they do when you mix them with something else. So I'm going here. I put, I'm going to put a little bit of um, dark here just to kind of show that's going to be this wall. You can I can put some purple in there. Purple is the magic color. So anytime you use purple, oh, I forgot I was going to put some. Uh, no, this is all in shadow, so that's good. No problem. No problem. Just going to make this dark. I'm not doing the shadow so much as I'm doing the light parts. So um, I'm still getting in here. If you can put a little bit of the dark in there, that's fine. But once this is dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the dark shadow in there on top of it. I just need to know what the color underneath is gonna be so I can put a little bit of that color into the shadow too. So this is the light part of the, um, of the street. It's not the shadow yet. The shadow will come on top of that. All right, look at this mess up here, I guess. <laughs> it was never, that was just all wet, but it's all gonna be good. I'm just gonna worry about it when it dries to so see what happens. And so we can just go over that and make something else on top of that. So right now we got this dark coming through here. This wall's gonna be dark. Now let's just get a little bit more smaller with our darks. So right in here, there's a wall. I'm gonna leave the top of the wall light. Now I'm using my round, number eight round brush to get in here because I, it's a small area. So. Why would I use a big brush in a small area? I'm going to go in here, do the top of the boats right away. Any questions? Let me look up here. Uh, let's see. No, no questions yet. So we're going to go in here. Now this is dry, it looks like it already. So I'm just getting in there and see how I'm using cool colors when I get to this area, warm colors when I go to that area. Because even that is like, this is closer, so I'm putting a drop a little warmth in there. When I say warmth, just go, it doesn't have to be exact color. It can just be red, orange. Those are all warm colors on this side. This is the cool side. So um, you can just dip into any color that's warm. I'm just going to go in here and just kind of come and get this back here. This is the top of the boats. So I'm creating a negative space. I'm doing the top of the boats and whatever's above there. And this I'm going to do all in blue back here or like a, a cool color because this is far in the distance. So why would I use a warm color there? I wouldn't because I don't want it to come forward. I want it to stay back there. And now the side of the boats are also dark. If you look in the picture, they're a little bit dark. And then the, even the water is even darker than the side of the boats because the boats are kind of white. And so you're getting kind of a look of just a darker bluish color for the side of the boats, leaving the top light. Again, think of objects as the top being light, sides being dark, and underneath usually like really dark. It's just like that's what you learn in schools in the beginning is like how to do shapes, you know, a round ball and how to do a block and a cube and, and, a, and a cone and all those things. And so everything in this has a shape like that. So you just think of what that shape is and think of what the top, the top is light, the side is a little darker and underneath or from away from the sun is going to be even darker. Now this area right here, I should have... I'm going to do like I normally do when I put a light. I'm going to put a little bit of orange. Like the sun is so bright right there. It's just going to bleed it orange. I forgot about that. I didn't normally do that, right? We always make that happen so that this part could be really light. That the sun is right there and it's burning. It's burning this area up. So I'm just going to wipe it out a little bit. I'll wipe out that area. And so the sun is just going to bleach that out that area because it's so bright it's going to bleach this area out and make it red and warm like this right through here it's just going to bleach it out and just going to come right down to there that's a trick i've been using now ever since i've been outside painting um plain air 
because the sun is so bright it just makes it like it don't see it because it just makes it white and like it's burned it's burned into your retina or something because it just takes that and it makes it red and so the side right along the edge here but only the stuff that's right there in the in the path of the sun would you do that now the side of this boat will be a little bit like there and now i'll do the side of the boat right away like well, let me finish these over here first so kind of come in here Pamela, what, what color are you asking about? Let me know what color you're thinking. I, I'm not sure what color you're asking about. Lavender is this color. I'm right here. I'm using lavender and I'm using uh, these blues. I use ultramarine, Prussian, peacock. So if these are not, this is not the reflection. This is the side of the boats. The reflections are coming, come, come later with a darker, something a little bit darker than this. And I'm waiting for this to dry so that I can go in and get all these other sh hard shapes. So while that's, you know, normally I would wait for things to dry and I go back in, work from back to front. But since it is a demonstration, a lot of times what I do is I find an area that's still dry. Like these boats are still are dry right now. So I'm gonna go in there and just get some of their, some of the color and values of the boats. And so make the edge. See, this guy I'm not going to wet along all of it. I'm just going to take a little brush right here and make it soft edge right at it. See, I put it first and then I take a little bit of wet brush and it'll just make it soft edge. And then you put a little bit of darker on the bottom here. And of course, the dark darks are going to make the shape of that. Again, I'm still right at right now. I'm doing the lights and the mediums and not into my dark darks yet, my detail darks. I always call them detail darks because they create details in your painting. They make objects and shapes. These are still my, I'm still coloring, still making my, um, bringing my colors into these objects. And so let's get some, um, well, let's do this boat now here too. And so this boat is going to identify the shape of the boat in front of it too. Look at this one, because this one, I'm doing the back boat and the front boat at the same time. That's called negative painting. I did this, that by doing that line, I created the shape of this front boat and the back boat. At the same time because i create the shape of the back of that boat and the front of this boat and these are those air kind of boats that have um, inner tube oh i forgot what they call them so we're gonna go in here a little bit darker and again these are not my darks these are my middle tones i'll go in there and get detailed and make them more look more like the boats that they are after i get this um the values of them first a little bit darker in there and then inside the boat too, I can get that right away. Go in here. I learned that there is a phone app called Netiz Notanizer that changes photos for value study. Give four levels black to white. Oh, let me know that what that um, app is. I'd love to see that app. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Thanks for that. We'll take a look at that. All right, so now we go in here and we're gonna do the flowers on the roof here, on the top of the wall, I mean. So I'm just gonna go in here and make the colors that you kind of used already. I'm gonna use some red and some orange flowers. And so I'm just gonna little dot the light part. Now the part that's closest to the sun, that's gonna be that part you leave white. And then we're gonna go in here. And I do the flowers first before I do the greenery around it, or you can do it at the same time too. But I don't want to switch my brush back and forth. So a lot of times what I like to do is just get all the like the bright colors first. Here you're gonna be a little bit orange and red. These are just flowers that are growing on top of the wall, leaving the white on the right side alone. And then I'll get the darker parts of them later. And I kind of let, once I put the water down, of course, I let things float inside there. And I do this while it's wet. And so then I also will put the green in, greenery inside that too. Here we're going to go and remember the part that's away from the sun leave that white leave that it's so bright the sun that it's going to leave a little bit of the edges really white so here i'm just putting in little flowers how about some yellow flowers there we go i just as i was watching andy evanson this morning on um doing a demonstration i noticed that he uses raw sienna a lot from holbein also and um I forgot that I used to use a lot of raw sienna for my yellow because it's more like a gold, 
but now I kind of use the Cronecodon gold for my golds, but that's actually a good color to use, um, raw sienna. And that's what this is kind of is when I use the Cronecodon gold with that. Now there's going to be a dark parts of those flowers, right? You're not going to make everything bright, bright. And so I'm going to go in with a little dark on this side away from the, and also I'm going to bring them down into the wall because they're going to be hanging over, right? I'm going to do that with the greenery too. So just bring it over the wall here a little bit. And then we're going to do the dark greenery. And so what is that? Prussian blue and Karanakadam gold because I don't have any greens on my palette. I mix all my greens. Mix all my greens. And so now I'm going to go with my greens, my greenery. I'm going to go in here. Just kind of get greens. I, I start with my dark greens first because when it bleeds out, it's going to get a little bit lighter green anyways. And so I, I kind of mix my dark greens first. I'm not sure if that's the right way of doing it, but that's why I, feel, I find it to work best that way. Because there's going to be parts that bleeding into the other parts and they're, they're going to get light anyways. And so now I can put like a little bit lighter green and I have com composed green. I put it in with my dark green and I can put it on this side a little bit here and there and put it into the color a little bit, bring it down. Maybe there's a little on this side, not only on the on one side, but on both sides, you can put a little greenery. Now I know a lot of times you're thinking, well, green, you don't really have green in this. It's not red and green composition, you know, but, um, this, this green can be more, just put a little bit more blue in it and it can be like, you just put a little blue in there and it'll get more of like a bluish green. And so it'll, it'll, it'll work okay. It'll work okay with the, with the color scheme that my blue and orange color scheme I got going here. Okay, so there's our flowers, right? And now I think this is almost dry where I can get in and get my details. Because I've worked from back to front. Um, usually I work, try to get those things done. So now I've got all my middle tones and my lights done, basically. Just a few more lights here. I noticed on the boat. I forgot about this. A little bit of lights on the boat. Now we're good with the boats. And then we'll go in with our details. Details, details. That's the fun part. That makes everything come to life, you know. And so that's what I'm going to do now with this, um, with the building. So I'm going to go in the back. And I like to use a flat brush for buildings. Why? Because windows and such are rectangular. So and buildings are rectangular. So it's nice, I use a flat brush for that reason, basically to make the buildings rectangular. And it is dry. Use, use the back of your hand when you're touching your paper because you don't want oils from your fingers to get onto the paper and then r repel the paint. I mean, if your hands are that dirty, it usually doesn't happen, but if your hands are dirty for some reason, you got oily skin, then it gets on there. So just use the back of your hand to feel if it's wet or not. And I'm going to go in here and start getting my, my darks. Now the rooftops in the photo, you really don't see the rooftops. They're just a little thin sliver. I'm gonna make it a little bigger because I went in while it was wet. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my, my wetness that I had on this paper by making a little bit bigger roofs. And I make them red, which it probably is I wrote in Italy, the tile roof. And so here we're gonna go over, make the little nice little roofs here. Here's a little balcony up there. Here's some red. And then we're just going to, this little part I had here, I'm going to rub that out later. I'm going to show you when, when I make it, take it wet. It's not a problem. I know it was a, a kind of like something dried there before it got ready, but we're just going to go in there later to fix that. Now the windows and such, just go into your darks. I don't mix a specific dark. I just dip in something over there. It'll be fine. I mean, it's almost like black anyway, so I can even dip in the black and, and that's fine. And a little bit cooler. And as I get over these, these darks are going to be warmer. These over here are cooler. And um, I should have my picture here, but I don't. So I can't really kind of see that little small image. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, we got some questions. Uh oh. Good evening, David. I can't paint with you, but I'm watching. Okay, you can paint later. No problem. Thanks, Pam. Having technical issues, I was asking about the back wall color. The back wall, the back, this, this whole thing here, <laughs> I'm not quite sure still. <laughs> These colors are all the colors. I use a bunch of colors in there from cool to warm, if that's what you're asking. So I'm going in here, I'm just kind of faking what's over here. You know, I'm going to put a little couple of little things in here. 
that's really bright. There's some windows here. And how important is it to make it look just like a photograph? That's up to you. That's a very personal thing. Some people like to be really loose with their, more abstractive. Some people like to be right on, so that they're gonna to go to this guy, this restaurant or whatever, and they're gonna go there and sell it to him. And so they want it to look exactly like that. So then make sure your drawing is on and then just take, be a little bit slower. You don't have to be this fast and you can slow down and get things done right. I'm just going fast because I only have an hour. And so we're at 7.05, so we're gonna, we gotta get done by 7.30. So <laughs> I, I don't have time to sometimes just um, make the details. And so we're going to go through here. And now, now watch this. I'm going to start using warm colors for my darks. I'm going to dip into some reds and into some warm darks. And it's all I have to do is dip into a red or orange or, or this yellow. Those are warm colors. And so, and even the alizarins and stuff, just dip into that with the dark colors of the blue and stuff. And, and once it's wet, you can go in there and get all those nice, beautiful colors in there. So it looks like it's coming forward. And that doesn't mean you can't, like, here, watch, I'm going to put a little red in that area. That's fine too, it's all good, all good. Here we're gonna go a little darker in there and here's a rooftop, looks like a little rooftop thing, balcony up there, just gonna put a little antennas and I have a washed out thing there anyway, so I'm gonna put out, um, we're gonna put a little, what do you call those, pergolas up there. <laughs> and so we're gonna do all kinds of stuff up there because I've made a little mistake up there with the, with the watermark and so we're gonna make it whatever we want. <laughs> You're the artist, you don't have to make it exactly like it is in the photo, you can just do whatever you like. I come down here. Go ahead, ask me a question, guys. Now's the time to do it, once it's over. <laughs> and so when you're doing this, again, um, don't get so caught up in little details. Think of the big picture. As long as this is dark, I don't, if I just left it like that, it would still work, you know, because I would not, I would not make much detail in this area either, but, you know, the more detail you put here, then you have to even put more detail in the boats and other things. So it's all about how much detail you put it back here is going to determine how much you're going to put up here. It's all related onto the um, center of interest. I mean, the center of interest decides everything. This decides, this area decides how much I'm going to do in this area. Because if this is center of interest is going to be really detailed, I can not put as much here. You don't want to put as much in this area so you don't look over here. You're taking your viewer on a little travel tour of this area. And so you want them to see this beautiful sunlight coming through there. That's the first thing you want to, for this person to see. Then you may go over to these people and they'll take you through a little tour of this. So you're touring. You're giving the people a tour. It's not like being there, but hey, it's the next best thing, right? We can pretend like we're on a trip. <laughs> it sure would be fun to be at this spot right here, sitting there painting this spot. Oh, I was on a trip with Dillman's, with the Robertson. We went on the Greek Island trip, and oh, that was amazing. We were hoping to go again in the future, but I also put a little stick in the pole into the water here because I didn't like how um, there was nothing there for your eye. Otherwise, your eye kind of goes off. And so I put a little stick right there. It'll just stop your eye from stopping right there. And it works out just perfectly. And I can put a little reflection in there. That all works out perfectly. A couple little windows here. And the people are going to be darker than this. So again, I just do the building first. Building's done. Look at that. How easy was that? See? I mean, you can go in there now. I can get little signs or something. But basically, it's done for now. And I noticed in this photo, there was no sailboats in this marina. I'm going to put some little sailboat rigging up there. Because it's just, I like to have little lines going this way. So, hey, I'm going to put some sailboats in this marina. Maybe they don't allow them in this marina. But I'm going to allow them back in. <laughs> Or maybe they don't sail in this part of wherever this part of Italy. I'm sure they do, but here I'm putting the little detail in for the glass. Okay, now let's get this wall done here. The big parts. You always try to work the big parts. So I'm going to do this shadow now. So I'm going to identify the, the wall with the shadow first, and then I'm going to do identify the wall. But right now we got to go with the shadows. And the sun's coming here, so we're going to throw some. And this last one I did, I didn't do the shadow right because if you look, this shadow is just from the sun coming over here, hitting here, and I have none of these flowers into the shadow. 
So this one I'm going to do from here, and I'm going to throw some shadows across this to make it irregular so that it looks like these plants are throw, casting a shadow there. So what color is the shadow? It's this warm color, and so I'll use that first, and then I'll add color into that shadow. So here I do the warm first. Again, the color is always the color that you're on, that you're putting the, the shadow on. So this, the, the street right now is kind of a warm color, so I'm going to use a warm color first to get the shadow. And then I'll put a cool color in there too to give it more of a um, more of a shadow look, I guess, or get some of the reflective of the sky in there because it will reflect the sky a little bit. So it doesn't matter what color you use; just make sure that you use that color again for the shadow. And now I'm making it more irregular because these these flowers are going to be casting, and also because I made a mistake right there, I had a little watermark, so that's the reason I'm doing it. <laughs> You know, there's always a purpose. <laughs> so here we're going to go down and just kind of throw some shadow in there. Now look, it's kind of warm and kind of like almost too warm. That's okay. Just go in here now and get, them, get some blues. I'm going to just go float them in there. You know, you're not stuck with that one color. You, once it's wet, then you can float other colors in there. That's what I have to constantly tell people is that you don't look at the photograph for the color. You know, I mean, yes, you can see what the color is. But there's other colors around that are going to be mixing into that shadow and i don't do the wall yet this is not part of the, this is going to be part of the wall but i'm doing the shadow on both the wall and the thing at once and then i'll go and i separate that the wall with a line across there not a line just a little bit darker reflection or shadow i mean so that's look how dark that is and how ugly that is Ooh, let's get some color in there <laughs> get some blue in there Ooh, it's a little bit too blue but it's floating it's fun i also use the magic color violet lavender the magic color that always helps it out a little bit I'm just it's gonna it's gonna radiate and how about this color of the flowers in there it's gonna you know, you're gonna reflect into the shadow too you know i'm not drawing the wall yet i'm, I'm drawing shadowing and so you've got to make it that make it the shadowing and on the picture Yes, if you look at the picture up here, see how straight that line is right there, the shadow line? That's because there's not many plants on the top of the wall, so you're going to get more of a hard edge line like that. I'm doing it so that because I put more flowers in there, so they're going to be a little bit more irregular. And it's my prerogative. I can do it anything I want. <laughs> and so can you. You're allowed to do anything you want. All right, so that, let that dry. And we're going to go in there with some violet. We're going to go with the... Mm, now let's leave that alone. Right, this is a pretty hard edge line in the photograph. I'm going to keep it soft because I don't want my eye to be over here that much. I'm going to make my eye come over to this area now. So let's do our details because now that's all our big our big mediums. Now we're into our dark details. Dark details, I'm meaning um, really dark darks like we did with the windows and stuff right here. Now we're going to go in with our small brush and get our details going. I'm going to go in here and get a few of these darks in here. Just because it's a little bit... A little bit darker in this area. I noticed that in this scene, there's no like light poles and stuff that'd be kind of fun to put in. But oh well, like there's no light. If you wanted to put a light pole, then like maybe we're right here. That'd be cool. It's kind of weird that there's no light poles or anything on this little area. But there was a lot of flowers. If you go into the Google Maps um, street view of this, you can kind of turn and go all around this and actually walk on this wharf all the way around it, which is kind of fun. So do that. Take a walk around before you start doing the painting, <laughs> like you're actually there walking around and trying to see what it is from other angles. Okay, details. Let's go put some sailboat rigging in here. There we go. Now let's get our, um, our, our darker water. Get some darker water in here now, because these are these are going to be the reflections now of the boat, the shit, the reflections and shadow of the boat into the water. It's kind of weird. You have to look at um, things like boats and stuff in the water and figure out how they sit in there. And a lot of times it's kind of funny because the reflection on a boat like this far away, you'd think it'd be white into the water. But because the way it is, and because of the, it's more like a shadow than it is a reflection, you get more of a, a, a dark shadow in the water of the boat. And that causes like a reflection because the edge of the boat, it's kind of strange. And sometimes you'll see the white in the boat, in the water too. So just kind of figure out, oh, I forgot that's going to be, 
it's gonna be red, right? Because I said, remember, I have to put this, that has to be warm right there because of the sun bleaching out that area. So make this reflection red. See that? I forgot, I almost forgot about that. That's reflected. And I use that to make it look like the sun is burning right there. It's actually burning right, right through your eyes. Because it, I mean, the sun is warm and it, just, it makes a path with the, with your eyes, you see, like you see it really dark, and then this is going to get lighter and lighter. And actually, back here, you don't really see that much reflections. It's just because it's farther away, so that you don't see the the um, ripples in the water. Because the reason you're seeing the reflections is because of ripples. If it's clear and not rippled, the, there's no waves, then you don't see anything. It's just like glass. So then you're going to see more of just like the picture in reverse, like it's a mirror. And again, anytime you want to learn how to draw or see something and draw something, just draw it. Get out there and draw it. Or go on, on Google and Images and just pick out you know, reflections and then see what happens. And then draw it. See what happens and look at it and study it. It's always about studying your imagery and know what you're painting. There is a little bit of light right here. So I'm going to put that there. Now the bottom of the boats are dark and the reflection is dark. So... I'm gonna go in here and just kind of go get the bottom of my boat a little bit darker. And, um, and then the whole boat on the bottom here is a little bit darker. It's gonna be reflections. And then in the water. Uh, Pam asked, how am I gonna get rid of the watermark? I got a large one on a painting this week while I was staging. I'll show you, I'm just gonna rub it and then add paint over it so I can cover it. So I'll get rid of that watermark in, in a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. Any other questions? Boots and flowers, where is it? The impact area? Well, my area of interest is right here. It's gonna be right in that area. The whole area is gonna be right here. That's my area of interest. Where you first see first. Now these people over here are gonna get you to do like a secondary interest. So now with the waves, and always when you're doing reflections, um, irregular waves, you know, little waves and kind of sharp edges. And then um, I always use the color of the, uh, and like I use, I don't use the color of the boat here. I use the color of the water first to make the reflection. Then if this, let's say this boat was red, then I add a little bit of red into the water after I get the blue. It's the same thing with the shadow. It's the same thing with the reflections. First get the look of the reflection and then put the color above it. Now this boat is white, so there wouldn't be, there could be some little bit of white in there, but I'm just gonna leave it dark because that's what it is in the photograph anyway. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. And uh, most contrast can go over here. So it's kind of neat to get a nice little contrast here, a little bit of detail. That's important that you get this nice and detailed because it is my center of interest area. I like, like I said, I like to call it area of interest because it is an area, it's not sometimes an object. Most of the time it's not an object, a single object. It should be an area that you're looking at. Put a little, little reflection now, this reflection here from the blue. Little reflections in there. If you want, you can put like a tint sometimes down. I'm gonna use my flat brush to put a tint of reflection into the water. So it doesn't, it's not as dark, but it looks like it'll dry lighter, but it looks like more waves in there. So you just put a tint instead of a wash. Washes are a lot of pigment. Tints, I find just a little bit of paint with a lot of water. That's a tint. And so it'll dry pretty light, but it'll give you a little bit of a line. It'll look like waves. And now let's get this wall. I think it's almost dry. Because this is dry. The people in the wall are probably the most important thing right now in here because this will bring this forward. And I'm also going to show you how to do um, the cobblestone walkway here or the walkway with, um, like I did here, you can see. I did this with the with the cobblestone. Now I notice in the photograph the the brick is going this way. It's kind of coming in this way. I change it so it looks more flat. And so sometimes you gotta watch out for stuff like that. If if the actual line work or tiling is this way and it doesn't look right, change it. Bring it this way so it looks more flat. It's just something you can do because sometimes if you do something as an art piece, it doesn't look right because of how 
you know, it's just basically a painting. So sometimes it just makes sense to do it in the direction that it should be, or that you want it to be so that it looks flat. All right, I'm still waiting for that to dry a little bit. So let's do some of these, um, some of these, these tile work, the um, cobblestone, the pavers on the thing. And so what I do is I use, a lot of times I'll use a flat brush. And so with the flat brush, and if you can see closer up, let me just show you closer up how there's, I put the pencil line in there. I pretty much put a lot of the pencil line in. See how I put the pencil line in there? And so I know where the, the, the things are going to be. I know where the pavers are going to be exactly. So I'm going to go in there with the color of the street, just a little bit darker. And I'm going to go around the little lines. And I, and I get a little bit darker when I go into the shadow part, because in the shadow part, it would be darker, right? Because it's in the shadow. So I'm going in here and I'm doing each individual brick <laughs> or paver or whatever they call them. And so here I'm going to go a little bit lighter. And they don't have to be all the exact same color. I always float some other colors in there. It's always good to float some other colors in there. I'm going to go in here and just and juxtaposition each one of these, uh, these pavers. Like you're actually paving the road with each brick. And I, you don't have to do all of them, but you know, a lot of them, you know, this is, this is in the foreground. So... Don't be, don't be shy to put a lot of them in there. And as I go into the area, this is wet. And so that's going to just, that just messed it up. See? So I'm going to stay over here. This is still wet, still damp. I don't have a hairdryer in here. So I got to remember to bring a hairdryer into my studio here. And so here I'm going to do a little bit grayer. And follow the perspective on your drawing. Don't just all of a sudden... If you draw something follow it don't feel like just by putting your brush down it's going to be good just make sure you get the you're going around the same perspective because those lines got all going in a certain way so keep that keep that going all the way through that's drawing part so i'm drawing even with these papers i'm drawing it so it looks and as you go up here of course i don't have to be as careful because it's going they're getting small and so i'm just kind of tapping and it'll look fine because i'm just Letting those be a little bit smaller. And so here. And this is still wet, so this got all kind of ruined here, but I should breathe on it harder. <laughs> so well let's take a time for let's take a time out here just for a second, take a little drink, and let's see if there's any questions. Any questions? Please ask some questions here. <laughs> uh, cheers, by the way. Cheers, cheers, cheers. This is a very good IPA boarding pass so we're traveling to Italy today and anytime if you see something in my painting that you feel you don't like let me know <laughs> I you know there's times where I may not see something and I may right here you get kind of I'm gonna rub that a little bit rub it out and actually while this is while this is drying here I'm gonna show you how to take care of this little mark watermark there so I'm gonna take my brush get some clean water I think Ashley got passed out here. <laughs> I mean, um, Oakley. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna rub this with my brush real lightly, really lightly. And, um, and now that it's wet, I'm gonna rub it into the background and take a little bit more water. And if I feel like it didn't get enough gone, like it, cause you have to wait till it's totally dry though. Remember I said, wait until it's totally dry. And now if I feel that's okay, good enough and I don't see anything, I'll just leave it like that. If there was something that I couldn't get rid of, I would take some opaque colors, float the pigment on top of that, and so that would cover up whatever mistake. Maybe I scratched it there or something. And then you can use more of an opaque color, like some of these kind of got a little bit thicker. And so that way you do that over there. I'm just going to get that in there. But now that it's wet, I'm, I'm going to put a couple of antennas back up there just so that this seems kind of flat, that rough, you know. So I'm going to put a couple of antennas and it's make it a little more interesting. And I also noticed that I gotta give a little bit more color in these darks over here because these darks are pretty ugly and not very colorful. So I'm gonna put a couple of little other things in there. And what time do we have? Oh my God, we got five minutes. Five minutes and let's get this wall in here. Let's get this wall in here now. And so this wall, I'm gonna start back here. Bring it down. Hopefully it's dry enough. <laughs> That's the part you really gotta watch. You know, when you're doing it at home, make sure that when you're doing a second wash or the washes after the first one are dry so you don't get any of those watermarks. It's very important to try to keep those watermarks at bay. And the only way to do that is work on dry paper. Don't work on paper that's wet. 
And so now I'm going in here and make it a little bit darker than I would have usually have done there. But because I want to, I put a little bit more pigment in there to stop it if it is a little damp. And so I'm just using a little bit more pigment. And that's one way of stopping their paint from running all over the place is just make it a little bit more paint in there. And it will not run because it's absorbing up. It's, it's thicker than the, you know, the dampness and stuff. And so it's setting on top there. And I'm making this a little bit darker, but I, once it's wet, I will show you. I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of color in there, lighter color, and I'm just going to float it on top. That's one way of you know making it not bleed into the background and um, get that wetness. All right, see how we just make it a little warm there. And then we're going to go in there. And I, I can even go darker than that when it's dry and get some little dark edges in there. And now I did lose my shadow. See, the shadow is kind of gone. And um, But once this is dry, I can go back into there. But unfortunately, I can't do that right now. So while we're <laughs> waiting for that, we're going to go back in here, get a little bit of dark. Since this is all dark down here now, I'm going to make this a little bit darker too. And now we're going to go in here and get our people. So Ashley, pose for me, will you? And so he's going to pose in a certain way. And so you can get him looking like he's walking and, you know, you can just put that in there. And so get yourself one of these guys and, and then I can go and I can do this chest first here. So I had him drawn, but now all the drawing is gone. So and I use just a dark color because I know it has to be darker. So I don't pick a specific color right at the moment. I just get dark head. I usually do the chest first and maybe a couple people. I do these dabs called David's dab. So you just kind of dab them. And I put the legs, characteristic legs, and um, so sometimes it's just one leg that goes down together because you don't really see both legs. One's up and one's down, they're walking. And then we're going to do another guy over here. And again, this is just one value right now. And this guy, this maybe this person has a purse. And um, then we do the, uh, let's say this guy's got a, where's my rigger? I need a little finer brush. And so we're going to go in here. This guy's got a little bike. He's taking with him. He's got a bike next to him. So there's the wheel, handlebar, front wheel. This guy's got a little dog, so it's blob with three little legs there you can see. Maybe ears, a leash. So there you go. And then we put a little bit of shadow underneath them. Even though there's no shadow, they're in shadow, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be a little bit of light that's reflecting and giving a little shadow to place them in the ground. You do that. Now these are, it's pretty ugly because they're just so dark. So what do you do? You give them some color. Here, I'm going to throw this guy with some orange. Put some orange right into his shirt. Maybe this person next to him has red. So I just put a little red in there. Maybe it even comes together where they're both in somewhere over here. Maybe there's a couple people back here. they have just little dots. So here again. Oops. That person's like keeping himself over the wall here. <laughs> I just got a little too close. So hold on, let's get rid of that guy again. Somebody was heaving themselves over the wall here. So we're gonna put him back in there. Little dots. Maybe there's a light pole here. Here's a sign. Here they got some engines in the back of these boats, so they just go darks. Again, this is all dark details. And when this dries, I'm gonna put lines in there. I probably can't do it in the time we have left, which is two minutes. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna let this dry and I will put a shadow in here and let's see I think it's pretty dry let's see okay you can put a little bit of shadow in there so I'm gonna take the same color that I had there and just make it pretty thick because I need to have a little bit more of the shadow coming across here let me use a little bit of purple and put them right into the shadow and then this wall is gonna throw a little shadow across here right so this is a tint this is a tint remember not that, not, my, not that much paint but a lot of water and then it'll just give me a tint of color in there. And now I'm, I'm wetting it and getting a hard edge. I'm going to make the shadow. It's going to be the shadow of the of the sun coming this way. And I normally wouldn't have done it this way, but because this was all drying and, and it was just one of those things. So there's a, a lot of times you have to change things away from what you're doing. Normally do if you know something is wet or you're trying to do a different kind of subject matter or something that doesn't work out the first time. You know, you do whatever you can to make it look good. And sometimes, you know, there's not a specific feature on how to do certain things all the time. You know, sometimes you do it this way, sometimes you don't. It all depends on what's wet, what's dry. 
Now this, these, these both need a little color. And so we're going to put a little red line in here because it just feels like these are the center of interest. So I'm going to put a little red there and just to give it a little bit of color into this boat a little bit here. Maybe the same thing on this one because they're both the same company. And now this needs a little bit of like blue reflecting from the sky in there. So I'm going to put a little blue in there. Again, this is a shadow. So I'm going to try to go follow. And that's something I can't do while you're going to be watching is put the bricks back in there, the pavers, because I want them hard edged. And so I'll put them in after this video is over. And you can see it on the when I put the picture up on, on Facebook or in the in the front of the video. All right, and so I think we're almost very close to being done. Let me see if there's any questions. Oh my gosh, let me see. Uh, thanks, Jan, for the um, my painting that got accepted in the TWSA. Yes, I did get in. Thank, thanks for that. That was a, that was a, that was. I did two of them. They were pretty fun to do. I do a couple more of them. I think I'm trying to get some pictures more from a lady who works at a at a hospital and I'd like to get a few more pictures of um, that and so I'm going to do a few more of those pictures. All right, so I think we're almost good here. And like I said, I will be putting, this is going to dry lighter and I will be putting in a few um, few of the pavers hard edged on there and that you can't see right now because it is all wet. And so we're going to go on that later. And so let me just show you what it's like. And I'll take the tape off. And so always pull your tape away from the, from the image. And so I'm going to take and pull this away. And next week, um, we're going to be doing, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, so we'll be doing another paint along on Thursday. And then the week after that, I will be in Florida. I'm going to be probably doing a paint along. Actually, it's going to be probably a demonstration, a plain air demonstration. I'll be doing it either from my hotel room or from on the street somewhere. <laughs> and so that'll be in Florida. So in a couple of weeks. So here you go. Here's today's, this, this evening's, and then this afternoon's is right here. Pretty close to the same, a little bit different. Uh, look at how this, a um, little bit lighter a um, shadowing. I kind of like the stronger shadowing. Um, it'll be fine once I get the little um, images in there. But let's get um, Oakley out of the way. <laughs> And so um, there you go. Let me go to this scene and then we'll say goodbye, right? So thanks guys. Thanks for showing up again. And um, like when you get done with this painting, please post it on my Facebook group, the um, achieving group that I have on Facebook. Let me see what you're doing. You did a great job with the elephant. Let me see what you do with the with this scene. Again, you can go right to the scene exactly where it is in Italy. And um, Maybe you've been there already. That would be even cooler if you had been there already on this little island outside of Naples. And you can see where this is actually by going to that Google map and just seeing where that is. And um, again, we'll see you next Thursday. And have a great time painting. And cheers. We'll see.